Okay, it's three o'clock and I think we can start. So hello and welcome to this presentation about physics at a global scale. Uh, I'm Manuel Lengle and I will be the moderator today. Uh, I am uh, from the Austrian National Committee and I'm also a member of the advocacy group. And it is my great pleasure to introduce uh, today's speaker, Michel Spiro. So he's uh, had quite the CV, so I will not mention everything, but I will try to give you a brief overview. So he uh, was president of the CERN Council from 2010 to 2012. At the moment, he's an emeritus research director at the CEA. He is a past president of the French Physical Society. And at the moment, he's president of EUPOP. That's the International Union of Pure and Applied Physics. Also, he's a fellow of the European Physical Society um, and has received many prizes and written many books. Also, he, is, uh, <clears throat> he was involved in the discovery of the intermediary W and Z bosons at CERN. Uh, he participated in the GALAX experiment um, where uh, solar were uh, associated with the detection of um, solar neutrinos, and also he was the spokesperson of Eros Pioneer Experiment, which was looking for massive astrophysical objects in the halo of our galaxy. Um, he will be talking to us about today about the importance of collaboration and uh, connecting and working with physicists from different places and different backgrounds and uh, towards the goal of an inclusive, global and connected physics society. So without further ado, I would like uh, him to start with his presentation and welcome you all to our session. Thank you very much, uh, Manuel, for this uh, introduction. Uh, I will start to share my screen to show you my presentation. I hope it will work. Uh, okay. So, uh, is it okay? Can you see? Can you all see the slides? Yes, we can see the slides. Everything is fine. Okay. So, my presentation will be. Uh, I will give you two examples of uh, what we could call the global cooperation in, uh, in physics. One with CERN, uh, which perform uh, research in physics, and one with IUPAP, which federates uh, uh, the physics community. So these are two different uh, uh, aspects of uh, cooperating globally. So I start with CERN. Uh, as you know, probably uh, CERN is, a, is an international organization so, uh, like UNESCO, uh, United Nations. It is uh, uh, managed by a treaty between uh, countries. Uh, it is a European organization for particle physics. Sorry, Michel. And it is also a laboratory. Yes. I think you can turn off your camera uh, during the presentation. Okay, I will do that. So just let me one second. And if you, I have first to, to, to stop the sharing. Can you see the image? Is it okay? Yes, yes it's okay. Okay. So it's uh, both. Uh, uh, an international organization, but it is also a laboratory here located near the, the um, border between France and Switzerland. You can see here the uh, town of Geneva, the Geneva airport, and here this is here the French side, and here the Swiss side. Uh, CERN, the international organization and the laboratory, built in uh, the past uh, uh, 40 years a huge uh, complex with the uh, uh, largest accelerator in the world, the LHC, which we can call the Lord of the Ring, 27 kilometer circumference, uh, when, where you can see the track on the, on the ground in yellow, uh, going be, be, below the 
Geneva Airport and uh, crossing the French and Swiss border. Uh, this accelerator accelerates uh, protons at the uh, energy frontier uh, in the world, which is 14 TV in one direction and 14 TV in the other direction. And they collide in uh, four areas, which are called the CMS here, LHCB, uh, LHCB Atlas, and ELIS. Uh, so this was done by the uh, CERN laboratory in collaboration with uh, laboratories uh, worldwide distributed in the, in the world. But in addition, a worldwide community of, uh, so this was done by engineers in the machine, the machine you can see here, it is in uh, underground, uh, these are uh, magnets and you have also um, electric fields to accelerate the particles and you can see the cryostat which uh, uh, super cool the, the magnets. But in addition, a community of researchers, 15,000 researchers distributed all around the world collaborated to build this uh, huge detector which are uh, located at the interaction points of uh, the, the proton beams going in the, in the two directions. Uh, you can see that the, these uh, detectors are the size of a cathedral. Here you may, uh, you may guess uh, this is a, uh, the size of one man. This is one man uh, at, the, at the top of my hero, which you can barely see uh, because of the size of, of the detector. Uh, these detectors have about uh, uh, 30 million pixels. So these are huge. Cameras and uh, uh, they collect data from uh, these proton proton collisions, and the rate of collisions is about 1 billion collisions per second. So, 1 billion collisions per second times 30 million pixels. You can imagine uh, the data treatment challenge for all these uh, big experiments. So, it's a community which is distributed uh, of, of research of about 3,000 uh, people collaborating in each of these experiments and coming from all over the world. So I come back to these uh, two aspects, the CERN organization with its laboratory, which is a, a bit the conductor of this adventure. And uh, second, uh, the fellowship of the ring, the community, uh, which built, uh, uh, built uh, this, this large detectors. So CERN, the organization, uh, was founded uh, in 1954 it started with 12 uh, European states. Now, today there are 21 member states. You can see the list of, uh, of, uh, of member states, but there are more and more. Uh, Romania is now a member. This is an old slide. And you have also uh, other activities. Uh, but you can see that you have uh, connected countries which are not uh, European, connected from uh, all over the world, India, Japan, the Russian Federation, United States, which, which are the second circle uh, behind the member states. The uh, staff in the CERN laboratory is 2,300 2, permanent staff plus uh, 1,400 other paid personnel on, on temporary positions. And as I said, uh, you have a community of users uh, coming from all over the world, about 12,500, which added to the staff of, of the laboratory make a community of uh, more than 15,000. The budget is about 1 million Swiss francs per year. The mission of CERN, which are uh, written in the convention, are first uh, scientific, uh, to push back the frontiers of knowledge, the secrets of the Big Bang, what was the matter like uh, within the first moments of the universe existence, because these proton-proton collisions, and you have also lead, lead collisions, so the accelerator can accelerate lead nuclei, and when you collide a lead nuclei, you have a little bit like a mini Big Bang in, in, in the lava. Second, a uh, lot of uh, new technologies were developed for, this, uh, for the accelerator and for the detector. Uh, and they are uh, used now in uh, information technology, the, the data treatment. Uh, the, web, uh, the web was born at CERN. It's a grid uh, which is a little bit of uh, a uh, cloud uh, ancestor, cloud uh, computing ancestor, uh, many uh, applications for medicine, for diagnosis, and for therapy. Third, to train uh, scientists and engineers of tomorrow, and also teachers and students. And the last but not least, 
to unite people from different countries and cultures with the same ideal, which is to uh, progress, to, to uh, unravel the secret of matter at the uh, ultimate uh, scale. So you know that uh, the, lar the larger is the accelerator, the higher is the energy, and the better is the uh, resolution of uh, this accelerator, which acts a little bit like a microscope. I will uh, go, uh, I will um, detail a little bit uh, these four uh, targets, uh, starting uh, in the reverse order. First, uh, unite people from different countries and cultures. So this is the fellowship of the ring. You see the distribution of all some users by location of uh, institute. Uh, so first in white, uh, these are the countries which are not connected uh, with some at all, mostly Africa and a little bit of, uh, of Central Europe or Asia, Central Asia. Uh, you see in red, the, the countries which are, uh, which participated to the construction of these big detectors, but which did not participate to the construction of the accelerator. In green are the, the countries uh, which not only participated to the construction of the detector, but also participated to the construction of the accelerator, of the LHC. And in blue, these are the uh, member states uh, which uh, de de decided about the strategy, the decision of, constru of, of construction of the LHC, and uh, which uh, uh, put money in a common pot, uh, which is a budget uh, of the laboratory. Uh, you can see by state the uh, number of people and the largest uh, country present at CERN is uh, the United, United States, uh, 1900 people, more than France and more than Germany and more than Italy. So it's really becoming a, a global a world laboratory, a global Laboratory. I think this is the first time that we see. Second item: uh, education activities, uh, mainly program of, of, of training, the first for scientists at CERN, but also for um, for uh, uh, in Asia, in Europe and Pacific School, in Latin America, young researchers, uh, CERN School of Physics. Certain teacher schools where you get the people from uh, teachers from a, a given country which are uh, introduced to particle physics and to physics and to particle physics in their own language, and physics students coming from all over the world. Yeah. Innovation. This is open innovation, which means that there are no patents. And uh, in fact, uh, the main aspect of, for, the, for instance, for the web uh, uh, discovery was that the web was free of use after it was invented at CERN. So open innovation is a marker of CERN policy, like uh, open pub access publishing and uh, now uh, open data access. Main, most of the innovation are connected to either uh, data treatment or to accelerator or to imaging uh, or to computer. Many uh, medical ap applications, this is not uh, so much known. So uh, accelerator can be used now for advanced therapy. So to target to uh, irradiate uh, tumor target, which you cannot uh, handle with uh, uh, other tools. And you can, if you adjust the energy rightly and you take a high ion, you can uh, de deposit all the energy on, in the tumor without that much uh, uh, irradiation uh, around it. So this is a black peak of uh, energy deposit. Uh, you can also use the uh, technique of imaging the uh, particle in, produced in the collision to image uh, 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 the uh, human body. So these are PET scanner uh, and now uh, MRI scanner. I give you here a, a short list of uh, the major uh, disruptive innovations made at CERN in open innovation, in the open mode. The first touch panels were in the 70s. The web was born at CERN in the 90s. Open software is, uh, was born at CERN. Uh, open simulations of the detectors, matter and, and radiation. PET cameras, MRI ma magnets. 
now open what uh, hardware with the circuits, which are open circuits to design, open access publishing, uh, where CERN pay for uh, uh, and put in competition with the uh, editors and uh, for public uh, and, and pay the editor for the for the peer review process and for the editing, and then the uh, papers are free for all uni universities in the world. Open data access uh, is starting now. Many collaborative tools uh, in order to, to manage the projects uh, in a global way. And uh, we got a report from the OECD, which showed that this way of, uh, of open innovation is much better for growth in the world than the system of, uh, of patent, which, which is generally uh, used. So you see, we are building a reality. It took, reality took, it took about 40 years to, from the ID to be operative and will run for another 20 years. So you see that we are dealing with a long-term collaboration. Uh, even if there is a lot of uh, emulation and, and competition between, between the teams. So it's uh, what we call co-petition, uh, which I think is a, a kind of model which could be uh, used in many uh, other fields, starting maybe uh, today with uh, medicine and uh, vaccine research. Uh, as you saw, uh, uh, competition is a bit, uh, uh, is a bit destroying the, uh, the it's a bit destructive com compared to the collaboration approach to, like CERN to, uh, to, to, to health or to vaccine production. In fact, uh, the organization is a little bit uh, like uh, the uh, computing organization. So the data treatment at CERN is by putting all the uh, resources connected together. So CERN has a, a data center, which we call it uh, tier zero to treat and, and uh, to treat the, the, the data. It is connected to data centers uh, in different regions, tier one, which are connected to the university data centers, which are connected to the uh, uh, researchers' uh, personal com computers. And uh, the organization of CERN, uh, the way the, the detectors were built, were, uh, and the way uh, that they manage the uh, construction and the, and the analysis of the data, is a little bit like that. CERN is a bit of the conductor. And you have in each country uh, 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 a federator, so CNRS from France, uh, Max Plan for, uh, for, uh, for Germany, and so on. And then you have the universities, and then you have the, the researchers. So it's a way of collaborating. And finally, uh, uh, advancement of science, which is the primary mission of, of, of CERN. In fact, with LHG, I think we reached a new. Uh, we are entering a new era, a new level of knowledge. So as you know, uh, matter is, done, is made of molecules, which are made of atoms, which are made of, uh, of nuclei and electrons. The nuclei are made of proton and neutrons, and the proton and neutrons are made of quarks, and so far quarks and electrons are the building blocks of matters. There are uh, U, D, and E are the, uh, the building blocks of uh, ordinary matter, and you have three families of uh, of quarks and leptons. So this is a kind of a Mendeleev table uh, at, at the level of uh, elementary constituents today, a new uh, level of, uh, of uh, knowledge of the uh, uh, matter constituents. We know that they are, uh, and they are connected, connected together, the quarks and leptons, uh, with three uh, forces, strong force uh, operated by, mediated by, by gluons, electromagnetic force mediated by photons and the weak force mediated by, by bosons, the internet differences, weak bosons. And uh, this model uh, is uh, treated by the uh, relativistic quantum field theory, uh, which uh, uh, is uh, managed, which, which is uh, derived from the symmetry. And in fact, uh, uh, this was not enough to understand uh, how these particles behave, because uh, if you uh, are left with only one symmetry, so all the particles should, have, uh, should be massless. So this is why the mechanism of uh, spontaneous symmetry breaking was invented by uh, Robert Booth 
uh, Franz Wander and uh, Peter Higgs. And this mechanism of, of spontaneous symmetry breaking, breaking it is uh, connected to a field, which is uh, called the Higgs field, and to a particle, the Higgs boson, which was discovered at CERN in 2012, which means that uh, now we have a unified picture of all these particles and these three interactions. Gravity is not new, you can see. And you can describe the level of uh, knowledge of uh, how these particles and forces behave uh, with one formula, which is uh, the formula uh, uh, of the Lagrangian of this uh, quantum field theory, relativistic quantum field theory for a weak, uh, strong, and electromagnetic interactions. So all physics be besides gravity can be described in, in one formula. As you know, there is another formula to describe all of physics, uh, which is the gravity formula of Einstein, which is not quantum, which is uh, geometric, which is deterministic, uh, which is the uh, general relativity Einstein uh, formula equation. Uh, by the way, uh, also to uh, check this formula, we need uh, experiments which are uh, the observation of, uh, of the Big Bang and of the universe, universe at large scale, where you also need uh, global collaboration to achieve the observation of uh, the uh, uh, Big Bang uh, uh, map and the uh, uh, large scale structure uh, distribution of galaxies. So this is uh, what we can call uh, big physics, uh, global physics, at the infinitely small scale and infinitely large scale. But as I told you, we have also another way to connect all physics, uh, all physicists, and I hope that we will connect IAPS soon to this, to this organization. So this is the uh, International Union of Pure and Applied Physics, which is another way for physics to, for physicists to collaborate. Uh, it is a 100 year union, more than CERN, uh, the mission from the very beginning was to assist in the worldwide development of physics, to foster international cooperation in physics, and to help in the application of physics towards solving problems of concern to humanity. Further IUPAP principles were, were developed, to foster openness and inclusiveness in physics, promote free, free circulation of physicists and quality of data, ensure integrity and credibility, promote physics as a building block of innovation and multidisciplinary research, promote physics as an essential tool for development and for sustainability. As I said, uh, IUPAP is uh, just uh, 100 years old. It started with certain, with, uh, certain countries. Uh, the first president of IUPAP were uh, Brague, Brilluna, so you see a uh, very famous CDC, the first at General Assembly was 1923. So we hope to organize a big event in 2022 and in 2023. The members today are 60. These are all the countries. The last countries to join are Bulgaria, Egypt, Jordan, and Uruguay, the European Physical Society, and the three uh, APS, American, African, Asian Pacific Physical Society, our uh, observers, and I hope very much that uh, uh, we will uh, sign an agreement between IAPS and, uh, 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 and, and IUPAP so that the International Association of Physics Students becomes, uh, become, becomes a permanent observer uh, of IUPAP, as it, as it was already in the past uh, uh, three years. So this, uh, the IUPAP members are distributed, so this is a distribution. As you can see, uh, like for CERN, uh, we are lacking of African countries and also Central Asia. The governance, uh, so it, it is governed, there are statutes, it is governed by a General Assembly, there are also bylaws. The General Assembly of all members is the highest governing body of the Union. It creates and amends the statutes, it sets and amends the procedural bylaws, uh, uh, and it elects the Executive Council that oversees the union activity between General Assembly. The General Assemblies are convened every three years, and meanwhile, you have Executive Council. I would, I, I would like very much IAPS to be observer, both to the General Assembly 
and to the Executive Council. So over here, that we have a, a rendezvous, a meeting point to visit. It elects, uh, the General Assembly elects the members of, of its commissions, and uh, it sets the members' dues, which means the country's dues. The Council has the authority of the General Assembly between General Assemblies, which are address we use, except for certain items specified in the statutes. For instance, if AAPS becomes a, uh, an affiliated commission, then it has to be ratified by the General Assembly, which will happen uh, in 2021. It should have happened in, in 2020 uh, this fall, but uh, due to the COVID-19, it will be in 2021. The commissions, so these are the commissions. They cover all fields of, of physics from the symbols, so you know um, all the units, statistical mechanics, astroparticle physics, low temperature, biological physics, semiconductors, magnetism, condensed matters, particle and fields, nuclear physics, physics for development, physics education, atomic molecular and optical physics, plasma physics, laser physics and photonics, mathematical physics, astrophysics, computational physics. Uh, they organize a major international conference in their field and they award young scientific prizes. Affiliated commission. So there is an affiliated commission in, in optics, in a general relativity and in gravitation, in, uh, in, uh, in, op in acoustics, in medical physics. Uh, and I hope very much that uh, we will have one for uh, uh, the association of uh, a physics students. Thank you. We are connected to many other uh, similar unions like IUPAC, uh, which is for uh, for uh, chemistry, for biology also, uh, for uh, uh, units, uh, and so. the International Science Council, which is the union of unions and of academies. We have also working groups uh, in many fields accelerators, uh, outreach, women in physics, uh, ultra high intensity lasers, in cooperation nuclear physics, in astroparticle physics, in gravitational wave, uh, Newton con constant, in accelerator science, in soft matter. So some uh, working groups have, have had uh, in the past close links with working groups of the OECD Global Science Forum to uh, produce roadmaps. So we uh, sponsor uh, under about 50 conferences per year, uh, very large, uh, 1,000 people, or medium size, 200, or very specialized. Everywhere with a special attention to developing countries. The requirements are scientific interest, worldwide attendance with no a priori restriction or difficulty to attend, inclusiveness and diversity. Young Scientist Prize Award. The Young Scientist Prize is granted by IUPAP on the recommendation of a commission or an affiliated commission. The award consists of a certificate, middle, and a monetary award. A presentation also takes place at an international conference sponsored through the commission. 192 prizes awarded between 2006 and 2018. Uh, the main projects in which we are involved now, there are three. The gender gap is, uh, issue, how to measure it, how to reduce it. So this was done together uh, with many unions and uh, the project was led by uh, uh, IMU, the International Mathematical Union and uh, IUPAC. The aim of the project uh, was to provide, now it's almost two years old, it was to provide data to be able to analyze the gender gap in mathematical computing and natural sciences paying a particular attention to regional differences. Moreover, the project aims to provide easy access to material proven to be useful in encouraging girls and young women to study science. And we are following this uh, with uh, now an interunion agreement to uh, promote uh, recommendations and implement uh, these recommendations. LAMP project, so this is a little bit uh, built uh, on the model of uh, Sesame, which is a light source built in, in Jordan, uh, which is being used by uh, all the Middle East countries, including uh, Israel, uh, Palestinian Authority, uh, Iran, uh, 
Turkey, uh, Egypt, uh, and uh, other countries. Uh, so it's a, it's a success both scientifically and for peace. And the idea would be to extend this model and this light of, uh, build light of like, like that in Africa, in, in Latin America, in, uh, in Asia. So this is a project which, which is also led by, by uh, the uh, IUPAP and by the cryptographic team. And finally, uh, last but not least, uh, I am very much involved in that. Uh, we are promoting, uh, at the time of our centenary, 2022-2023, an international year of uh, basic sciences for sustainable development. Uh, we have now more than 30 unions behind us and uh, 40 academies, 25 no Nobel Prize winners and uh, medal fields. Uh, we have been uh, recommended by UNESCO and we are waiting for the next uh, United Nations General Assembly for, uh, for a proclamation of this uh, international year by the end of, uh, of this year, beginning of next year, and so that we have a full year of preparing events in 2022 and 2023. Uh, you have a website uh, that you can consult. Uh, I would very much like to, to connect uh, AAPS to this international, international year of basic sciences for sustainable development. Uh, this is a way to, to show that sciences, fundamental sciences, uh, so sciences driven by curiosity are uh, needed for the advancement of science in general and of societies in general, and to show that physics is connected to all uh, basic sciences. And I think that's all, if I am not wrong. Yes. So I can stop the sharing of, uh, of, uh, of the screen and leave to Manuel uh, uh, the floor for a question. I hope I was not too long. Thank you, Michel. That was a very nice talk. And I have to say that the, the goals of IUPUB uh, seem very much like the goals of the International Association of Physics Students. And I really hope that we can join forces on our, on our different talks, uh, uh, on, our, on, on our topics. So first, I would, I, I would have a, a question about CERN. So you said that in CERN, the, the World Wide Web was de developed and also ion beam therapy and open software and now open data. So um, was this an active de decision of CERN to make all of this stuff publicly available or was it more like we need to organize it in that way so that we can, um, because there are so many people involved that we need to have all of these things open or was it an active political decision to have everything uh, contribute to uh, public knowledge? So I just show my, my, my image, my face, and I stop. Uh, thank you for the question. It was both, uh, it is in the, in the convention that it should be uh, open. And this was a way for some, for some from the very beginning to uh, show that there are no military aspects connected to some. You know, the original uh, uh, name, uh, meaning of CERN is Center for uh, European Center for Nuclear Research. So there was also, always uh, from the very beginning the fear that uh, this could be used for military uh, development. So uh, for the founders, uh, the way to uh, oppose, uh, to uh, prevent from uh, military use was to promote uh, and to enforce uh, open innovation and open data. But second, as you said, uh, it would have come naturally because this is the only way to get uh, people from all over the planet to, to, to collaborate and to share their views and to decide between themselves what is the best approach uh, to, 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 to use for uh, this, as a common ideal, which was to, to be this big detector to dis discover the X particle. So in fact, both were uh, present uh, politically because to avoid the military uh, uh, spin-off uh, and second to, 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 to help the country. Okay, and just as a quick follow-up, so is there still a concern about military usage of CERN or not? So is this, is this still a topic at CERN or not? The only concern was uh, uh, present concern where there has to be uh, 
quite careful, is the grid. As you see, uh, all the data are connected by a, a kind of a huge computer, which is a, a web of all the uh, existing computers of the uh, of data centers in particle physics in all the places, uh, including uh, Iran, US, uh, uh, Pakistan, India, Israel, and so on. So it's a huge computer which is distributed in in a category of, in many many computers. So uh, you may uh, fear that you may uh, yes, fear that uh, we have to be sure that this computer is used for uh, particle physics data treatment and not for uh, other other uses, which could be uh, either for private use to develop a product or for military use. So you have, you have to be uh, to have to you need to de develop a spy to be sure that uh, the jobs which are running on this huge uh, web of computers are really for the uh, particle physics purpose. Hmm. Okay, very interesting. Um, uh, following up on on the thing you said with many people collaborating, so 3,000 people per experiment, and that, that now has always been a question in my head. So if you have a look at the publication from, from CERN, there are always a couple of hundred of authors. Uh, how um, how do you know who contributed and what was contributed and like how how is it working there if you, if you have that many people collaborating together or what is what is the feeling and if if then at the end there is uh, something a project finished how do you know who did or who contributed in what way to this project yes so uh, the only way is to uh... Uh, approach the people who are working. So if you have to ev evaluate someone, you have to uh, uh, look at the internal notes within the collaboration to see what was really his contribution proper, his proper contributions. And second, to discuss with people who know this person to evaluate what he did exactly. So you cannot rely on impact factors in, in, a, in, in, in a review uh, uh, this is a way. This is not a way which can be used for particle physics because, as you said, the final product is is, public, is signed by three thousand people in the alph alphabetic order. So the only way is to discuss with a guy, to uh, to approach the people who worked with him, and to look at uh, his internal notes within the collaboration. So it's a totally different uh, way to approach the evaluation. Okay, which. So actually, this was a, a pre-question to to another question that I I had. And so, so as as young physicists, we are in an, in an environment that is incredibly competitive. So we all have to compete for very few positions. So first, we have to compete for PhD positions, which is not as difficult. And then we then there are less and less positions. And if we want to be in research, we need to. Fight, not, not fight, but we need to compete for these positions. And at the same time, um, collaboration and corporations are, are the, the most important thing. So where do you see us, maybe as young physicists in the field between, or in, in the tension field between collaborating and competing with other people at the same time? Because sometimes you're even collaborating with your competitors. Yes. So within this big collaboration of 3,000 people, for instance, when uh, uh, they started to uh, design the detectors, there were small competi competing teams with students, with uh, uh, PhD students. So having an ID on a type of, of, uh, of um, sensors that they, they would like to develop and implement in, in, the, big, in the big detector, they were competing with other teams and this competition at the end had to be sorted out by the collaboration to decide what was the best way to, to go and to motivate the people who, uh, whose ideas was, was not retained to participate to uh, the uh, retained ID uh, and to collaborate. So this process, which is a, a kind of uh, competition and collaboration, which we call co competition, was working very well. And in fact, uh, young people their work was very well recognized, peer recognized by, by their, their uh, collaborators in, in the big experiment. 
and they uh, to benefit of the uh, est the uh, evaluation that people had on their work to uh, uh, use it to value their work and their uh, their smartness in, in, in collaborating and, and in competing. So we have to find a way. So this is exactly what you said. We have to find a way in physics to both competing and through peer recognition, through the relations with, with the people who are coll collaborating, still to collaborate and to uh, and to uh, accept to join the best ideas uh, at the end. So it's uh, it's a code of conduct, and in fact. Uh, at CERN, uh, there is a code of conduct, I could not sh show it, where uh, people accept the diversity of approach, accept to compete, but accept at the end to collaborate on the best idea, which, are, which is recognized uh, by all people vote. At, at the end, there is a constitution in these 3,000 people, a constitution with a decision-making process, which is accepted by everyone, and you have to accept it. Uh, you, you may win or you may lose. You have to accept uh, this. Uh, scientific democracy. Uh, so it's a, a process which was working, uh, we, which had to, to be developed. And uh, after years and years, now I think it's a very nice process, which I think we should advocate for the society uh, and which could be used in other fields than, uh, than particle physics. It's a mix of competition and collaboration. Thank you very much. Um, I would ask you to turn off your camera to see uh, whether that can work while I ask my next question. So um, one question that is particularly interesting for us is how can EUPUB contribute to the development of physics uh, in countries where there are worse conditions for funding? So in some regions, especially in the global south, um, these countries are underrepresented. And uh, yeah, how, how does IOPUB try to help people or help uh, the scientific infrastructure in these countries? So first, uh, we try more and more to have uh, conferences located not in the uh, developing countries, de developed countries, but in the developing countries. So in, uh, in the uh, uh, countries where physics is, uh, is starting now. So we are trying to, to get conferences in uh, Vietnam, in uh, Africa, in Latin America and so on. So it's a way to bring physics in these countries uh, while uh, they have a hard time to, uh, to go to, to the US or, or to, to Central Europe. Uh, so we, are bring, we bring conferences to them as well as inviting them to, to, to the conferences. So this is the first thing. Second, uh, we try to create a community of, uh, of users which can participate to uh, uh, develop infrastructures in, in the uh, developed world. For instance, for uh, light sources, we are creating a community in Africa and in, uh, in Latin America, which can have uh, easy, easy access in uh, powerful light sources in Europe or in the United States or in, or in uh, developed Asia, in Japan or in China. So it's a way for this community to uh, learn and to uh, be able to advocate in their uh, region area uh, a, a light source of this type. This worked very well with the uh, Middle East. We started uh, for many years to get uh, all the countries that I mentioned in the Middle East to be uh, to get access to CERN, to to ESRF in, in Grenoble, to uh, other parts of the world. So that there was a local community ready to advocate and to use the now existing light source in Jordan. And we would like to do that in Latin America, in Africa. So conferences, creating a community of users which can get easy access to large scale science infrastructure in developed countries. This is a way that we develop physics in this development. And we, we attract them in IUPAP in order that uh, we help them to, to unite for, uh, for both for learning and for advocacy. Thank you for your answer. Um, now I have uh, actually a kind of tricky question 
connected to the first question. So I agree that it is very Im important to hold conferences in developing countries and also to uh, make, make research infrastructure more accessible for people who do not have the same infrastructure in their countries. However, it is like in, in times of, of uh, the climate crisis, like what, what can also, how can we collaborate and make these things possible while not, while trying to maybe reduce flying and international travel? So have, has IOPUP also an opinion on, on these things and how to make it possible to, or in general, how, how can you collaborate without, while well, trying to reduce energy consumption and trying to reduce uh, flying? So uh, you are right, uh, there is a contradiction between getting face-to-face uh, -face contacts which are, which are needed uh, in order to, to, to connect to, to, to each other. And uh, there is a contradiction with uh, reducing the, um, the CO2 uh, footprint by this uh, big, big, very large conference of, of, of 1,000 people traveling from uh, all, all over the world to, to, a single, to a single place. So we are trying now to, to promote a kind of uh, mixed approach. So you see, you, are, you have two, two approaches, one which is to, 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 to connect, to, to gather people in one single place. And the other approach is to have a webinar like this, web, this webinar, which is totally remote. In between, you could think of uh, regional, so on, on a given subject, at the same time, so on a window, which is reduced probably three or four hours a day, uh, you could have regional uh, meetings which are connected to, the, uh, to each other. So a big world conference could be made of connecting an African uh, conference, uh, Latin America conference, Asia conference, Europe conference, North America conference, which uh, are on the same subject, which meet physically in a place which is not far from, too, too far from, from them because it is regional. But at least all these places are connected together for three hours a day. The rest of the time, they, they use it to uh, prepare the next uh, three hours a day and to, to discuss together and to, and to connect together. So this, this would be a, a kind of uh, in-between uh, 1,000 people face-to-face -face meeting and a totally virtu virtu webinar virtual meeting. Uh, so we are trying to promote a kind of uh, intermediate with five places connected to, to each other, which are big places, uh, region conferences. I don't know if, uh, if I am clear enough. Okay, well, actually, actually that, that does sound pretty nice. And uh, I mean, it is also what we're kind of trying to do here to make knowledge accessible, even even in times where we cannot travel, and maybe we can even learn something from this from this time. Um, one, maybe. Uh, so we haven't received any questions from the audience yet. If you want to submit some, please please feel free to do so. And uh, in the meantime, I will ask another question. So, uh, as someone. I mean, you have a very impressive CV. You have been working in various different organizations. And at the same time, you're also a scientist. And so what I sometimes find difficult, um, I, I just started my PhD and it is focusing on, on science while still being in different committees and still uh, advocating for, for science. Or uh, sometimes uh, professors tell us that teaching is something that we should not do because it will hinder us in our scientific career. And also we should not do outreach because it will hinder us in our scientific career. So I would like to ask your opinion on, on for example, being a member in a physical society and doing outreach and, and teaching and all these things which distract us from science, but I think are still important. And, and I, I would like to ask your opinion on on how how focused one should be on on doing science and how much room you should leave for other things. So I think it depends on the personality and the person. But what I I am prom promoting 
we should have scientists with different, there are scientists with different talents and they should express their talents. Their talents could be either to publish or to make experiments, but it could be also to uh, federate the community of physicists, to uh, the outreach. Uh, it could be uh, to help people to get access to, 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 to science, to, uh, to teach. Uh, all these criteria should be used to evaluate people and not the only criteria, criterion of, uh, of uh, publish uh, or perish. Uh, so this is my main point. People have different talents and we should evaluate them on all their talents and not a single one like uh, uh, publishing, which is a tendency, tendency now. Uh, we need a community which is diverse and which has all the talents. And this talent, by the way, this could be much more inclusive, especially for women, which can, uh, for which uh, other talents can can be uh, also appreciated, uh, and, and should avoid focusing on, on a single uh, narrow evaluation criteria. We should all use all the criteria. Uh, we saw during the COVID nineteen per per period, people were active in, in many areas including helping other people. And this should be part of the evaluation. In fact, in private industry, when, when they recruit you, they look at all the facets of your personality and not only, uh, only one. And in, in science, uh, we are just focusing on it, uh, uh, how much you have published in nature and science, which I think is a wrong approach. Especially in a laboratory where you want to have a mix of people. Okay, thank you very much. I, I quite agree. Um, so, uh, there are some questions from the audience and the first question is, how did you decide, uh, your field of studies and your field of research? So it's a long time ago. Uh, it's true that I, I was attracted by, uh, either the astrophysics or, uh, or by particle physics. So it was a little bit, uh, uh, philosophical motivations to go to the frontier of, uh, of knowledge, either by the, with the infinitely large or infinitely small. So uh, uh, I connected with CERN very soon from the very beginning. Uh, and uh, I started with my thesis at CERN. But after uh, some time, after 20, some uh, 20 years of research at CERN, I uh, came back to uh, try to connect uh, the uh, uh, two infinities, uh, infinitely small and, and large, uh, starting to study uh, solar neutrinos. So the neutrinos uh, uh, which are emitted by, by, by the sun. Uh, and uh, after that, uh, connect, I, I connected to the dark matter issue and looked at, uh, at the possibilities uh, of using microlensing to to search for a massive astrophysical compact halo object. So finally, uh, I did what I had in, in my mind when I was very young, to try to approach both fields, the uh, astrophysics and particle physics. So it's from the very beginning I was attracted by, 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 by these two uh, fundamental uh, researchers. Okay, thank you very much. And another question that uh, we got from the audience was, does UPUB work with governments? Uh, so for example, in counseling, in, in counseling, in matters of public concern? Yes, so uh, we have two ways to function with the government. First, I said that the uh, members of UPUB are country. Sorry, it is a bit difficult to understand you. Can you maybe go a bit closer to your microphone? Uh, so there are two ways for IUPAP to connect to uh, governments. First, the member, IUPAP members are countries. So uh, the dues are coming from, from the government. So we get money from the, government, from, from the French government, from the German government, through a li liaison committee. So it's a way uh, to connect to the, to, to the government. Second, uh, we are very much concerned by uh, the, uh, well, the freedom of, of, uh, of, uh, of circulation of scientists, the freedom of, uh, uh, the, the freedom of, 
or in, in, in studying, uh, in, in doing research in, in physics, uh, the um, freedom of access to data and, and so on. So as soon as we see uh, uh, issues which are connected to freedom of, of physicists in the world, we were very active during the Cold War, by the way, uh, we uh, act uh, under the initiative of the local uh, of the local physics society. Uh, we, uh, uh, we we try to influence the government together with the local physics society to influence the government on uh, uh, releasing the, uh, the constraint which are put on, uh, on some physicists. And uh, this time, uh, there are more and more, uh, unfortunately, there are more and more uh, issues connected to freedom of, uh, of physicists in, in the world. We are also very much uh, sensitive to the visa issue uh, for uh, accessing to conferences. And for this visa issue, we are uh, uh, trying to, to convince the government uh, if they want to have an IUPA label for a conference, they should uh, uh, afford uh, easy access to the to the conference. Hmm. Okay, very interesting. So, by by making people travel and communicate to each other, you can advocate for 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 peace and collaboration not only with within science but also also above. Um, so we have uh, one one. I, I would have one. No, first one, one more question from the audience. So um, can young researchers uh, get involved in EUPUB? And also, how do you think young researchers should get involved in EUPUB? This is a very important question. Uh, IUPAP, the membership, I mean, so the, the active people in IUPAP, to my mind, are not uh, representing the young generation. And this is why I would like very much AAPS, International Associ Association of Physics Students, to be much more uh, active and present in, in, in IUPAP. This will reju rejuvenate a little bit uh, our functioning. And uh, this, this, this is for us a, a strong advocating point uh, for argument for getting, uh, getting you on board of IUPAP, starting with an affiliated commission, but maybe uh, playing a major role in IUPAP. We could bring uh, new ideas, which I think would be very useful. Thank you. And now I would I would like to ask um, two questions. So uh, the last two questions, which are kind of connected. So the first question is, why should young people uh, strive to become scientists? And I think for me, at least, that is connected what do you think uh, is the role of, of science in a society and how can science contribute to, uh, to society and to, to the overall humankind? Yeah, so this is a point which is deep in my heart since I am promoting this International Year of Basic Sciences for Sustainable Development. The main point is that the science, especially curiosity-driven science, which, uh, which is uh, driven by, by, by the uh, knowledge, by, by curiosity. These sciences uh, contribute to increase the pool of knowledge in which future generations will dig out the uh, knowledge they need for the challenges they will have to face. You know that, that uh, quantum mechanics was uh, born just from a curiosity driven uh, uh, investigation, general relativity also. And uh, we see now that uh, we can use our knowledge, which was, uh, start, which, which was uh, brought by uh, uh, many generations ago. We can use it for, uh, to face our present ch challenges. So we can hope that the science we do now will be used by the, by the future generations to face their challenges. So this is clearly uh, uh, sustainable development uh, in, in itself. We are not probably using the discoveries that we are doing now. They will be used by the future generations. So obviously applied sciences are used immediately and this is clearly uh, a benefit for 
for the society, a short term, short term benefit for the society, but we need also the long range benefit for the society from purely uh, curiosity driven sciences. Okay, thank you very much. Actually, now there was another question incoming from the audience, uh, which I think is very, very interesting. So yesterday we had a session about cultural and historical aspects of astronomy. And on Friday, we will have uh, a session about philosophy and ethics in physics. And do you think that these topics should be included in, in the basis of, of learning in physics? So for example, included into a bachelor curriculum that every every young scientist should think about ethics and stuff like that. Uh, ethics is a major issue now uh, for science. So you have the direct issue of uh, technological sciences and ethics, but uh, uh, we have to integrate more and more uh, the uh, ethics in our curriculum and in the science we do, because we know that uh, the um, acceptability, the um, recognition of the value of science by the society will depend very much on the ethical approach by the scientists themselves. Uh, this is clearly true for medicine, but not only for medicine, even for physics, uh, we have to uh, be careful now on the ethical impact of uh, our research. This is more and more important, both for the uh, data treatment, I mean, artificial intelligence, for, uh, uh, for the env environmental uh, issues, for, uh, for health, certainly, uh, for biodiversity, for, um, uh, um, for, for um, um, military aspects and, and so on. So uh, this is clearly, I think, uh, scientists should be uh, aware of uh, the uh, ethical dimension of, uh, of science and of their research. I uh, would re really plead for that. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that answer as well. Um, and now for the really last question that uh, we will ask in this session today. Unless, unless it brings something else up. Uh, so how does IOPUB make sure uh, that diversity is an important place? So how, how does IOPUB advocate for diversity in physics? So for example, women in physics, LGBTQ plus, or racial diversity or people with disabilities. So what can IOPUB do to uh, help these underrepresented groups uh, in their career and also in 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 yeah in, in their career advancement and make these groups more visible. So as an example, for each large, for each conference which which has the IUPAP label, which is sponsored by sponsored by, by IUPAP, we ask a special session dedicated to uh, diversity, so that people look at how much the diversity was respected in the conference. Uh, uh, and what they could do to uh, uh, improve the uh, uh, representation of di diversity in their community uh, and in the conference. We also ask the organizer of the conference to uh, implement in the organization itself of the conference enough diversity. And they will have to report at the end of the conference how well diversity was represented in the organization, in the speakers, and in the attendance of the conference. And if this was not enough done, we may cut uh, the next uh, requirement uh, as the, the next, uh, when they ask for a sponsorship uh, again, uh, they, may, they may suffer from what they have did before. So we are implementing this uh, for all conferences now. There is a charter for the conferences sponsored by IVAP on diversity and on women, uh, representation of women in, in the conference. Uh, we are also uh, promoting very much uh, in the recruitment procedures that uh, there is enough uh, representation of women and uh, we, are, uh, we are not establishing quota, 
but uh, we would like very much that there is a comparison of uh, the recruitment, the evaluation, the promotion uh, of women compared to the pool uh, of women in the community. Uh, so that this be done systematically and that people les learn lessons from uh, what they did before to improve uh, in the future. Okay, thank you. And now for the end, I would like to ask you if you have uh, some final thoughts on this session that you would like to share with our viewers. So first, I am sorry that I could not share uh, the video so you could not see my face, but I think this is not too much. Uh, I appreciate very much uh, uh, the uh, numerous questions on the, uh, that uh, you, you ask. Uh, I hope I did my best to, to answer. I think it is a good format, a rather short presentation with a lot of questions behind, because otherwise uh, you have a kind of, uh, of a speech, uh, endless speech, uh, and you don't know what is the impact of the speech. While uh, with having many questions, you can see uh, what uh, what is uh, what people was were expecting uh, and what they, what, they, what they are asking, so I can improve for the next time. I think these questions were all very very relevant, and I was very happy to to interact and to, to answer them. Uh, I congratulate you for organizing this uh, this uh, webinar, and I, uh, I understand that you, you had one before, and then you will have one later on uh, on ethics, which I think is very important. We should go on in this direction. And I hope very much that soon you will be able to, to again uh, meet face to face also. And maybe you do a combination uh, if you want to have a, a world uh, attendance so we don't too much uh, to find a combination of, uh, of remote attendance and physical attendance. We should try to go this way. We cannot, uh, sorry, we cannot, uh, we should have some physical contact with this kind of internet with place physics, physical contact and then get your physics. But we can try to be smart to try to make a mix of course. Okay, and thank you very much for inviting me. I was very happy to, to interact with you. Okay, then thank you very much again for your talk and for answering your questions. Uh, it was very nice to see you and to, to hear you talk. And I just want to make a brief, uh, take this moment to briefly advocate for uh, the next event. So tomorrow we have uh, a session on advocacy on Friday and on Friday we have sessions on climate change and on philosophy and ethics and physics. And I do hope that we can see uh, many more participants there. And with that, I would like to close this session. Uh, thank you all for participating. And yeah, hopefully we will see each other at the next session.